chapter 14. We're going to be digging on in. We've been studying the book of 1st and 2nd Samuel, but today we're going to be taking a little detour. Luke chapter 14. If you've turned over there, hold your finger in that place and let's look, go to God in prayer. Father God, thank you so much today. Thank you for just giving us another day to live, Father. Thank you for all those who come out today. Thank you for your people. Use me, Father, in a radical way, Father. Uh, this sinful man who's, who comes before you, Father, just, uh, just broken and humbled, Father, and, and grateful that you chose me. Amen. Father, I know I, I, I don't deserve anything. Uh, I, I don't deserve the friends you've given me, the wife, the incredible family, uh, all the incredible disciples in the church. Lord, uh, I pray that we're totally committed to you. Lord, uh, uh, we cry out to you, Father, and uh, we worship you, Father. You are the only God. Father, we pray that we can put total commitment in the hearts here in London, Father. That the men and the women, the kids, the children are totally committed to you. Father, thank you for those visiting today, Father. We, pray, we know Satan is at war with God's people. And Father, we ask your power, Father, to defeat the enemy. We ask your power, Father, to come into this place and speak to your people, Father. Stir their hearts, arouse their conscience, prick their minds, help them to really be truly committed to you. We love you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 14. The title of the lesson is Total Commitment. In verse 25, the Bible says, Large crowds were traveling with Jesus, turning to them, he said, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father, his mother, his wife, his children, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Amen. Right here, the Bible makes it crystal clear that Jesus calls for total commitment. Yes. Jesus is more important than your physical father, your physical mother, your friends, anybody in your life. He's even more important to you. Jesus Christ calls for total commitment. In this verse, he's not saying you got to hate your family, your friends, your mother. He's not saying hate yourself. He's saying your love for God has got to be so strong when compared to everything else, it looks like hate. Jesus calls for total commitment. Are you with me here? In verse 26, or verse 27, it says, anyone who doesn't carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. The cross was an instrument of death. It was what criminals were killed on. The cross symbolized you were ashamed. You, you were cast out. And Jesus says, you, you, you've got to carry your cross as a Christian. You know, you've got to put to death who you are and become who God calls you to be. Jesus calls for total commitment. Verse 28. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it? For if he lays the foundation not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build, but was not able to finish. Suppose the king is about to go to war against another king. Will he not first sit down and consider whether he's able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? And then in case you were wondering, the guy with 20,000 is King Jesus. The guy with about 10, that's you and I. Are you with me here? Yeah. Says if he's not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and ask for terms of peace. He says, when it, once, he's, once you see, you cannot fight against God. It is you that makes the personal decision to ask for peace with God. To wave the white flag and say, I, 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 fall, I surrender, I submit completely, totally to you, King Jesus. He says this. If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and ask for terms of peace. In the same way, any of you who does not give up everything he has cannot be my disciple. And the church said... Right here, this is very crystal clear. Jesus Christ calls for total commitment. Are you with me here? In the book of Acts, in chapter 20, when Paul is preaching the word, he says, I've not hesitated to preach the whole counsel of God to you. And the whole counsel of God is not only the New Testament. The whole counsel is the whole counsel. It's the whole Bible. Are you with me here, church? And so today, I'm going to give you scriptures from the Old and the New Testament, the whole counsel of God the whole word of God. We are a Bible church. The Bible commands us to follow the Bible. Being a Bible church, we don't just go by the New Testament. Why? The Bible doesn't teach to build a New Testament church. In the book of Ephesians, the Bible says the church is built off of the apostles and the prophets. 
The apostles are in the New Testament. The prophets are in the Old Testament. The church is to be built on the Holy Bible. We're not saying you got to bring animals in here and sacrifice the old sacrificial system. In that case, I know a lot of brothers would be coming in here with goats and animals and sheep and all kinds of stuff like that. Now, I know Michael Hart's foot may look like a sheep right there. He's got an injury right there. He's already a big man and his foot is swollen on up, so that's a big foot right there. If you ever thought Bigfoot was alive, today you may have found him with Michael Hart. That is literally a big foot. And yet, <clears throat> we love Michael, he knows I'm kidding him a little bit. We, we, we understand the church is built off of the Bible. Even Paul the Apostle says, all scripture is God breathed. When he says that, he's talking, the word scripture is referring to the Old Testament. In the book of Acts, when Paul persuaded people to believe in Jesus, he persuaded them from the Old Testament. How do we know that? The New Testament hadn't been completed yet. New, New Testament didn't get completed until about 150 AD, when all the apostolic books were collected and formalized and canonized in what we know as the Holy Bible. Are you with me here? So we're not out to build a New Testament church or just an old. We are out to build a Bible church, and it's my command as a man of God, a preacher, to preach the whole counsel of God to you. And as a disciple, you got to preach the whole counsel of God, Old and New Testament. That calls you to total commitment in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 14. Total commitment. We're going to look at one of the most incredible men in the Bible. This guy called for total commitment. He called God's people to change. He called God's leaders to change. He called the people of the land to change. And he called not to just make an incremental change, but to completely total change, total commitment. You know, there's a story of these two battleships that are at sea. And one battleship sees in the distant land another battleship. And he sees, sees this light. And so he sends, because he this is a pretty, pretty big sized battleship. And he see, sees this light, so he sends a message. He says, we are a battleship. Change your course right now. We are at war. Change your course. And of course, right away, another message came back. The message says, you change your course. The captain, who was known, very famous, sends a message right back. Boom. Hold on. We are the most incredible battleship on the waters. Change your course right now. Boom. Another message came right back. You change your course. In fact, change it about 20 degrees. <laughs> the captain, he's offended. He's, he's angry and he sends a, he says, I'm captain. And he gives his name and his credentials. I'm so, I've been in military war for so long. Change your course right now. Boom, another message comes back, says, hey, I'm a seaman. I'm not a captain, but I'm a seaman. Change your course 20 degrees right now. Captain gets ticked off. Says, if you do not change your course right now, you're going to face the consequences. The seaman sends back a message that says, we're a lighthouse. You make the choice. You know, in a, in a godly way, God is our lighthouse. <laughs> he, he is our lighthouse. And if there's any changing to be done, it ain't God. It's going to be you. God is not going to change for you. God is not going to Change the commitment level for you. It doesn't matter what you went through. Doesn't matter how you were raised. None of those things matter. I look around, I see flesh and blood. We're all human beings. You got different colors, different shapes, different sizes. We're all humans. You got different cultural this, that, and the other, but we are all men and women right there. And yet God is not going to change for us. But let me tell you something. Satan is trying to change what God is. Satan is trying to change the word of God. Satan is trying to change God and carve God out in his image. And yet, even if you, 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 you got to be careful. You don't carve God out in your own image. You let God make himself known to you through the word of God. And you understand that God carved you out in his image, which is inspirational to think that of everything in this world that was created. The Bible says God created you in his image. He didn't create the sun in his image. He didn't create the moon in his image. He didn't create the stars in his image, but he created you in his. God loves you. And so God calls for total Commitment. Second Chronicles chapter 14. We're going to look at Asa here. This is a very, very, very powerful, powerful testimony of God's people in the Old Testament of how God called them back to total commitment. 
and they used Asa. It says here in verse 1 of chapter 14, Abijah rested with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. Asa his son succeeded him as king. And in his days, the country was at peace for 10 years. So under Asa's leadership, there was peace. Don't you love it when there's peace? You know, when you got baptized, you made peace with God. You decided, I'm not fighting you anymore. I want to find out what your will is for my life. I want to become a disciple. You know, Friday night was incredible, guys. Yeah. Friday night, we had this incredible devotion on. You, you even had people that weren't in the campus that kind of showed on up right there. Uh, you know, Maria Hart, she still looks like a campus student right there. Uh, she was there and excited. And what, what, what gave me great, great encouragement was to see our newest sister, uh, who was met at UEL Freshers Fair, our sister Sandra, she said, listen, I, I'm going to change. I'm going to make peace with God. I want to become a sold out disciple. And Friday night, Sandra got baptized. <laughs> you know, she's made peace with God because she was gut level open about her weaknesses and her sins. And she just shared it all. And you know, someone has a fear of God when they could care less what you think about them. They only care about what God thinks about them. And that gives you boldness to just lay it on out when you know it is God who is the one who will be your judge. And people cannot be who di dictate what, what, what you, you've got to be a man or a woman of God. She, she just got open. I was, I was going, I, it got a little bit uncomfortable. You know, when someone confesses their sins and, and they really get open, it can get a little uncomfortable. It can get a little uncomfortable. And, and, and that's how it should be. But, but, but Sandra was, she was feeling great. <laughs> we were all uncomfortable. Sandra wasn't. Sandra was like, yeah, I did this. I did this. I did this. And today, I'm going to become a disciple. <laughs> it's awesome. And she got baptized. It was awesome. <laughs> She's a sold out disciple today. Verse 2. It says this, Asa did what was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. You know, as Christians, we got to do what's right before the eyes of God. It may be wrong in the eyes of man, but it's right in the eyes of God. It says he removed the foreign altars, the high places, smashed the sacred stones, and cut down the Asherah poles. You know, you've got, as a Christian, th th these are areas you always got to deal with. You you've got to remove the foreign altars, the foreign gods in your heart. You've got to get rid of the high places that can be in your heart. What were high places? High places were where pagans would go and worship. They would do drugs. They would do all kinds of detestable practices up there. They'd get involved in sexual orgies and all these kinds of things. After they do the drugs on these mountains, they would do these things in, a, in, in an effort to get high, which is where many believe that term getting high came from, a religious pagan worship, getting high. They go there. Asa goes, we got to get rid of those high places. And yet as Christians, you got to remove the high places that can be in your heart. He says he smashed the sacred stones and cut down the Asherah poles. Asherah poles were a phallic symbol. Of course, the, the land was full of impurity. The land was full of sexual lust and, and impurity. And yet we at this time, we live in a land here in England, not only in England, but all around the world where sexual impurity is tolerated. It's condoned. It's encouraged. You can't turn on the Internet without seeing something that's evil, wicked. You can't look uh, left or right without seeing young women who, who, are, who are not virtuous. They're dressed in an um, improper way. It, it's, just, it's just terrible. And this scripture is we're living it today. The many Asherah poles here in London. You walk around, you just see the impurity. It's rampant. Asa got rid of it. He commanded Judah to seek the Lord. You notice he didn't ask them? Yeah. Hey, bros, can you? Yeah, I don't want to offend you. I just was wondering, if, is there any? Oh, you know, I don't want to be so. No, you need to seek God. <laughs> That's what he said. Sister, seek God. Brother, you need to seek God with all your heart. Yeah. Ma ma married sister, uh, I have a problem with my marriage. Seek after God. Yes. Married brother, the woman, you won't listen to me. Seek after God, bro, with all your heart. I command you to seek God. You know, this morning, I command you to seek after God. Yeah. If you're a teenager and you're 14 years old and you know how to use an iPad and get on an iPhone, I command you to seek after God. I command you, if you're a young person, to seek God. Your generation is in trouble. You guys are in trouble. You walk out these doors, there are signs that tell you to be gay. You want me to tell you what the Bible tells you about all that? that that's sin. 
it is wrong. Someone came, hey, do you believe in gay marriage? Absolutely. Me and my wife are happily married. I'm fired up about it. I got a prettier woman than I was supposed to get. Yeah, I love it. It's awesome. I command you as a young man to seek God. With all your heart, I command you. This is, I'm not asking you this morning. I'm commanding you as a young woman to seek God. I'm commanding you to seek after him, to find out what he teaches. Some of the most incredible people in the Bible are young people. David, a man after God's own heart, he was a teenager. He did extraordinary things because he believed in the unleashing of the power of God. He believed God would give him the victory. And he had those five smooth stones and he took out Goliath. You guys remember that one, right? We've got to command one another to seek God. He removed the high places, incense altars, every town in Judah. And the kingdom was at peace under him. Oh, look at that right there. You command people to seek God and there's peace. He built up the fortified cities of Judah. Since the land was at peace, no one was at war with him. During those years, for the Lord gave him rest. Let us build up these towns, he said to Judah, and put walls around them with towers, gates, and bars. The land is still ours. We have sought the Lord our God. We sought him. He's given us rest on every side. So they built and they prospered. And the church said, I love the statesman Edmund Burke. He's an Irish statesman. And, and, and if you know him, I mean, I bet Martin, Martin Scott knows who he is. Uh, one of the things that Edmund Burke said, the only thing necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. I put before you the only thing necessary for evil to triumph here in London is for good disciples to do nothing. It's for good women, good men of God to do nothing. To wait for somebody some, and just do nothing. That, that wasn't Asa. He didn't sit around waiting. And figure, no, we're going to do something about it. We're going to do something about it. We're not going to sit around. He had a bold attack on the idolatry in the land. And that's our first point. There needs to be a bold attack on idolatry. Not a passive little kind of tiptoeing around, but to attack that which is idolatrous. He attacked the idols in, in, in the land. Obviously, he dealt with them in his life. You know, I, I've just seen the, the, whatever you worship is what, whatever controls you is what you worship. Whatever controls you. God controls you. That's who you worship. Your emotions control you. I command you. Get rid of the, get, don't go by your emotions. They change. Your experience is, is what controls you. You're controlled by your past. Let me tell you something. I was, I was, I was abandoned. At 12 years old, you know what my father told me? He says, you know what? I'm sorry to tell you, son. I'm not your dad. I'm sorry to tell you that. I cried. I, I, I was broken. Two years later, my mother told me, hey, listen, I, I don't know what to do. She broke down. She began using drugs. She started, started with alcohol. Then it turned to other things. Then it turned to, to hard drugs. Before you know it, she, she was a complete drug addict. She left me, all three of my brothers. We were abandoned. We lived in the house. No water, no lights. It was terrible. You know what it did to me? 14 years old, I was praying to the Lord. I said, God, why you do this to me? God, why you do this? And, and, why you do this? I was so glad to meet Christians. And they showed me the word of God. And they showed me the life of Joseph and how the Bible says you intended to harm me, but God intended it for the good, the saving of many lives. And so I see what I went through in my past experience, and it doesn't define me. It was to teach me what God was teaching me through those tough times and lead me to him, to lead me to him. And, and, and I'm not just I'm just going to be trapped in my past. Psychoanalysis. You hear that now, they psychoanalysis. You feel down. You go. You got. You got churches that teach us like you psycho now. How they want to dig into your past and get all psycho now. You you come to and you go. You know I, I've been feeling like a dog. I've been feeling like a dog. And then the psychoanalysis person goes, Well, how long have you been feeling that way? And you go, Ever since I was a puppy. <laughs> oh, let's get no 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 no. Whatever you went through, God is sovereign. He allowed it or he caused it to produce total commitment once you start looking in the scriptures right there. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Asa was incredible. He says, let us build up these towns. What he means by building up, he put walls around the town so that enemies could not come and attack them. In the Old Testament, that's how the city was built. There'd be a wall around it, and so you'd have protection. You know, in the kingdom, we've got walls of protection. Discipling is a wall of protection. Discipling is protecting you from you. In the kingdom, we've got protection to evangelize the nations in this generation. That's an incredible vision. 
that's an incredible thing that you can go, you know, it doesn't matter. I, I, I got a purpose in my life. It's a wall of protection for you to get it done in this generation. The Bible church, the church in the Bible, they evangelize the nations in one generation, about 35 years. That, that's a wall of protection. The friendships you have, you may not have the same musical in, uh, interest with, but these are friendships that over the course of time will be a wall of protection for you. Isn't it awesome when you have friendship with someone a total, total but different background? Their strengths are your weaknesses. Your weaknesses are their strengths. It's a wall of protection. He gave protection. And not only that, he says, let us build up these towns. And so they prospered. They prospered financially by being totally committed to God. I'm not preaching prosperity gospel here, guys. I'm not talking about that. But I am talking about being excellent and God blessing you for being excellent. You know, it's been incredible. Um, as I think about the church and I think about when we first landed here uh, and I, I, I just think about all the incredible disciples uh, that were here in the remnant group. Uh, I think about Ollie and Eugenie and, and, and they were here, their total commitment. And, and I just think about uh, D and D and James. Uh, we got together. We were in Camden Town and we were thinking about how to build the church right there. And, 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 and you know, James, he's a crazy man right there. He just was, he's, I was like, calm down, James, calm down. Let's, let's, let's focus right here. Uh, but but they're, they're just incredible sold out disciples and just to see what God has done with the remnant. Uh, we're going to look at it here a little bit later on how the remnant came and they joined him. The remnant came when they saw total commitment. The remnant came when they saw the miracles. The remnant came when there was a call of total commitment. There was peace under Asa's reign. Now check this one out. Verse 8. Asa had an army of 300,000 men from Judah equipped with large shields, spears, 280,000 from Benjamin, armed with small shields, with bows. All these were brave fighting men. Pretty cool, right? Pretty, pretty, pretty awesome church he's got right there. Zariah the Cushite marched out against him with a vast army and 300 chariots and came as far as Masha. Asa went out to meet him, took up their battle positions in the valley of Zephyr near Marish. Then Asa called on the Lord, his God, and said, Lord, there was no one like you to help the powerless against the mighty. Asa said, it doesn't matter how many people, how many brave warriors were powerless without you. You believe that? Yeah. I mean, isn't that not, that's, that's total commitment to the power of God, not the power of man. Our church is going to take off when every single member gets focused in on the power of God. Gets off of yourself and just stops thinking about, I can't do it, I can't do it. Just don't think about yourself. God can do it. We're not fighting our battle. We're fighting God's battle. We're not fighting for our world. We're fighting for God's kingdom right there. It's all about God. Asa saw it. didn't matter how strong my, my army is. I believe in the power of God. Do you believe in the power of God? The supernatural power of God to give you victory. That, that, that's, I mean, he had every reason to, to go, wow, look at, look at the great people, talent. He did, that, that, no. He called for total commitment. And you see him relying. He says, help us, O Lord, our God. We rely on you in the name, in your name, we have come against this vast army. Oh, Lord, you are God. Don't let man prevail against you. The Lord struck down the Cushites before Asa and Judah. The Cushites fled and Asa and his army pursued them as far as Gerar. Such a great number of Cushites fell. They could not recover. They were crushed before the Lord and his forces. The men of Judah carried off large amounts of plunder. That's the contribution. Amen. Amen. They destroyed all the villages around Gerar for the terror of the Lord had fallen upon them. They plundered all these villages since there was much booty there. They also attacked the camps of herdsmen and carried off droves of sheep and goats and camels. Then they returned to Jerusalem. Is this not awesome? When the supernatural power of God comes on the man of God, he calls for total commitment of God, of the people. And they had victory. They had victory. Are you right now totally committed to God? Is there a total commitment to God in your heart? Is there a total commitment to God? Are you faithful to God? You know, a lot of people say, well, I'm faithful. To be faithful is to be fruitful. You can't separate the two. You can't say I'm faithful, but I'm unfruitful. You can't say I'm fruitful and then be faithful. You, you, you got, they, they, they go together. 
Being faithful is being fruitful. And that's being totally committed to God. They're very fruitful right here. They won the war. They won the battle. You know, God will allow things to get, quote unquote, a little dodgy. So that you can get back to focusing on him and being totally committed to God. Chapter 15. You guys still with me here? <clears throat> Check this out. <clears throat> this is a minor prophet <clears throat> that goes to Asa. And he's, he's not even a guy that, I mean, in some ways, Asa had to, he, he could have, you know, just kind of shrugged off his, his discipling and, and just not listened to him. But Asa had a humility about him. He was willing to see his own sins. It says, the spirit of God came upon Azariah, son of Odeb. He went out to meet Asa and he said to him, listen to me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you when you are with him. Whew. If you seek him, he'll be found by you. If you forsake him, he will forsake you. I want to I want to I want to share something with you. God's love is unconditional. He loves everybody. If you're here today, God loves you. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. Don't debate it. Don't go. Yeah, I don't feel it. God's love. Don't worry about that. You don't have to feel God's love and all that kind of stuff. God loves you. He loves you. His love is unconditional. Guess what? God loves the lost world. Guess what? People that are in false religions, God loves them. People that believe you can be baptized as a baby and you can't find one scripture in the Holy Bible that teaches that, that's a false teaching that Satan has put in the hearts of man who has perpetrated the Catholic Church. Catholic means universal, which has gone around the world, and it's a false teaching. But you know what? God loves the Catholic Church. God loves, that. God loves the Catholic Church. God loves the Pentecostal Church. Even though you look in the Bible, the Pentecostal, you can't pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It came without warning in Acts chapter 1, verse 2. Or Acts chapter 1. They didn't pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It came without warning. Pentecostal Church was created in the 1900s by a guy who just wanted to create the miracles himself. I know. I studied it out, and that's my background. The first Pentecostal Church was in the place where they have all great TV shows. Hollywood, California. That's the first Pentecostal Church. And then they went to all Africa, Ireland, South America. So I'm not saying this to offend I'm saying this to equip you with the truth. And God loves the Pentecostal church. God loves. God, God loves ISIS. God loves Hitler. I, I know, I know, uh, they may be a little uncomfortable. God th th These are God's people. God's love is unconditional. But guess what? A relationship with God is totally conditional. Just because God loves you does not mean you're saved. Just because God loves you does not mean you're right with God. Just because God loves you does not mean you will go to heaven if today you died. If an aneurysm hit your neck right now and you walked out those doors and died, does not, just because God loves you does not mean you're going to heaven. You've got to be right with God according to what the Bible teaches. You've got to be right with God. And as Asa was saying, he says, the Lord's with you when you're with him. He says, God's love is unconditional, but a relationship with him is totally conditional. It's based on the word of God. I love my wife. My wife loves everybody here. But I'm the only one who's got the relationship with her. You mess around with my woman, we're going to have some problems. I'll even take on Michael Hart, and he's three times my size. I'll lose, but I'll take him on. He'll beat me up, but I'll take him on. That's how God feels about his church. It's his bride. You don't mess with God's church. You don't mess with God's bride. You don't make God mad. You seek him, he's with you. You don't seek him, he's not with you. You know, if you have not been seeking God, he is not with you. He's not with you. Don't, don't worry, he's not with you. It says, it says, if you seek him, he'll be found by you. If you forsake him, he'll forsake you. For a long time, Israel was without the true God, without a priest to teach and without the law. Is that not sad? Nobody to say, hey guys, here's what it says in the Bible. But in their distress, they gave up on God. I mean, huh, why have all these bad things happened to us? No, it doesn't say that. It says in their distress, they turned to the Lord, the God of Israel, and sought him, and he was found by them. In those days, it was not safe to travel about. All the inhabitants in the land were in great turmoil. One nation was being crushed by another, one city by another, because God was troubling them with every kind of distress. As for you, be strong. Do not give up. Your work will be rewarded. You know, I, I, I want to persuade you as a Christian. To be strong, don't give up, your work will be rewarded. Amen. Be strong, don't give up, 
your work will be rewarded. Be strong in the word of God. Be, be, be strong in the grace of God. It, it takes the grace of God to be a Christian. You're going to get hurt. I'm going to hurt you. People are going to hurt you. You got to give them grace. I got called this morning somebody who said nasty things about our church and did bad things. And someone said, well, you know, hey, they, they may want to come back. I said, well, amen. That, that would be awesome if they came back. We're out to save all men. And none of us is any better than anybody. It's not our church. It's God's church. We've got to have we got to be strong in the grace. We've got to be strong in the grace. We've got to be strong in our commitment. We've got to be strong. We can't give up. I love Winston Churchill. Known for being this incredible talker and orator. He quit high school. He came back years later after he'd done great things. And as he goes to the high school, they're thinking he's going to give this long-winded speech. And he got up there and he said this. Never, 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 never quit. And then he sat down. <laughs> that was his speech. That was it. That really is what it's all about. Don't quit. Don't give up on God. Never, 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 never give up. Doesn't matter how bad you have it in the kingdom of God. Don't matter what you go through. Just don't give up on God. David never gave up on God. He had all kinds of crazy things happen to him. He didn't blame God. That's what Satan wants you to do. He wants you to blame God. He wants something to happen to you and you go, yeah, yeah. He knows, his, he knows he's going to hell. You know hell wasn't created for Christians? The Bible teaches hell was created for the devil and his angels. It wasn't even created for us. The Garden of Eden was created for us. Perfect world. We always say, hey, how are all these problems? The, the problems are in the world because we are in a fallen state. The total depravity of man. That's the reason why we got issues. God created a perfect world with no oyster cards and no council tax and all that stuff. It was incredible. No tube distractions. You didn't have the marathon messing up where you get to church on time. I mean, you didn't have any of that stuff. You had the Garden of Eden. They didn't have marriage problems. The Bible says they were both naked and felt no shame. Amen. We got singles in the house. I'll keep it right there. You guys with me this morning? We've got to be totally committed to the Lord. When we're not with the Lord, the Lord is not with us. We, 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 we cannot give up. We cannot give up. I want to ask you a question. You giving up on people? You giving up on people? For all you true disciples, have there people been? I asked myself this question. There were people I gave up on in my heart. In my heart. Just gave up. Just, eh, maybe not. Eh. Nah, probably not. You know, it's interesting. I went back through my emails because I read the scripture. I got to repent of everyone I gave up on. I found a brother who actually leads a congregation in Europe that I was having a relationship with. And I, I forgot he was in Europe. I was living in America. I never thought I'd move to Europe. I emailed him and said, bro, I'm living in England now. He goes, hey, can we get together? And he leads a congregation. That's just because I read the scripture. I said, don't give up. I went back through my emails and just, I, mean, I want to encourage you, if you've given up on people, don't give up on them. Don't give up on your parents. Don't give up on your friends. Don't give up on your family. Don't even give up against people that have said nasty things towards you and all that. Just don't give up. Make that decision. Your work will be rewarded. Verse 8, when Asa heard these words of the prophe prophecy of Azariah Odeb, son of Odeb, the prophet, he took courage. He removed the detestable idols from the whole land of Judah and Benjamin, from the towns he had captured in the hills of Ephraim. He repaired the altar of the Lord. That was in front of the portico of the Lord's temple. I mean, he had to fix up the church service. It says he repaired the altar of the Lord. That was in front of the portico of the Lord's temple. Sometimes you got you to have totally committed church service. Sometimes you got people there on their iPhone, their Facebook, and during church. Sometimes you got people, they don't sing. They think, oh, singing's for the talented people like Kari, who can do Be With Me, Lord, really awesome like that. <laughs> Man, see how he sings? Oh, that's not for me. So then you're going, you know what the Bible says? It says, sing to the Lord all the earth. That means everyone is to sing. It says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And that encourages brothers like Jock Grinwald. And all he's got to do is make a joyful noise. That fires up people like that, like our brother Renee. Just make a joyful noise. You know, our church has got to sing. Now, we did okay today, but we, we got to sing to God. 
not because we're talented, but because we want the presence of God to be in the sanctuary. We want people to hear us singing to him. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Though none go with me, I still will follow. You got to fix up church service sometimes. Sometimes you got to fix it up. You got to get the singles. Quit being weird, guys. Be friends. Be friends. Hang out with one another. You're all you got. And if you're really good friends, guess what? You may start dating. You know what? I told that. I said that to Frank. I said, Frank, just be a good man. Be a good Christian man. You know, just be an awesome disciple. Maybe, who knows? Frank goes, okay, I'm going to do that. So Frank is a pretty awesome disciple. And then Frank sheepishly came to me. He says, you know, bro, I kind of like this sister. I said, oh, really? He goes, yeah, but don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. <laughs> so I went home immediately and told my wife. I said, guess who Frank likes? I said, don't tell anyone. Of course, she told Maria Hart. You know how the sisters are. Probably the whole church already knew. And so Frank is believing nobody really knows. And, and, then, and so I didn't talk to the sister. I said, sis, there's a brother like you. So stop it. <laughs> What's his name? So, so, so I said, well, I'm not going to tell you. And I, we, we named a few. See, in the church, what we do here is this. If you like someone in the church, we don't do like how in the world where it's all about how sensual and all that stuff. We protect, we guard each other's hearts. So, so as the preacher, you, we go to the individual and say, who do you like? And we name three or four, you know, people w w without any emphasis. How about this brother, this brother, this? Well, maybe that brother, maybe that brother, maybe that brother. Oh, okay. So you got three interests. Yeah. You go back to the brother. Hey, what about these three sisters? Okay, maybe those. Okay, so you got three interests. And when you find a match, then you tell them, I think there's a mutual interest. And they both get all giddy. Well, Frank, that happened to Frank. <laughs> Frank and Ashley Matos are now dating in the kingdom. <laughs> So cute. It's awesome. It's incredible to date in the kingdom. Ask Simon Oxton. Ask Victor Como. It's incredible when you fix up the church and get disciples dating disciples that builds the kingdom of God. Amen. Let's keep going, guys. We're bringing it in for a close. Then he assembled all Judah and Benjamin. Verse 9. And the people from Ephraim, Manasseh, Simeon, who had settled among them, for large numbers had come over to him from Israel. When they saw the Lord, God was with him. Do you guys see what, you understand what happened there? The remnant, the word remnant means survivor. God's church had been in division. You had Judah, where we get the line of Jesus, and then you got the northern tribes, the ten northern tribes. And so there we say you had kind of the church div divided kingdom right there. And when they saw God was with Asa, people go, you know what, we're, we're kind of in the northern kingdom. We kind of believe most of what you guys believe down there in the south, but God's not with us. There's no walls of protection, no discipling, no total commitment. Preacher's not calling for it. Preacher's not doing it. I, he hadn't been out bucket shaking and on campus and doing anything with me. No, the preacher's just kind of tired and overwhelmed with his life. The Lord is with you. I'm going to go down and be with you guys. And large numbers of remnant came over to join. I, I, I never forget we planted the church and having Sh uh, Sean and Sandra, they, they leave Manchester, they go, we're coming down to the church in London and joining. It was awesome. And they're serving in our kids' class. Uh, I, I remember when uh, <laughs> Martin and Teresa, they came on in. That little bumpy start right there, a little, little, little bumpy landing. But they, Martin, 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 you, you can tell it. Martin was asking every question. So how's the church? What are you guys doing? What's going on? He said, well, I got these challenges. What do you think? I said, bro, you, bro, I, I, bro, I think, I think you need us, and I think we need you. And Martin came down. I'll never forget that prayer we had. We cried about the kingdom. Teresa came. She was kicking and screaming a little bit. She was at the EMC. She was. She was, she, she was kicking and screaming a little bit. But that's awesome. Because that means she's got a little fight in her. Let me tell you something. Teresa is hard line. She has deep convictions about everything. And let me tell you something. They've changed the church. Teresa stayed up all night cooking for the brothers so we could watch the Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao fight, dealing with all of our all of our idolatry of, of, of boxing, and she just served us all night with a smile on her face. All night. No, just bro, just want to cook for you guys, want to, want to give to the kingdom. God's with us. 
And they moved all the way. From, they gave up their home. They moved all the way down here to be with us, guys. I think about Carlos and Carla. Yeah. Carlos and Carla. They go, the Lord is with they, they, they came out. They moved from Madrid. And, and Carlos took a stand up there. He goes, listen, this, something's not right. And we got to do something for the Lord. And they, they, they've, come, they've moved all the way from Madrid to be with us. Michael and Maria Hart. Michael and Maria. I love when the Lord gives you a shepherd in the church that's bigger than you. A shepherd is kind of what we would, the equivalent of an elder, dare we say. And, and, and Michael and Maria, they shepherd the church. My, Michael, it, it, you know, I disciple Michael, but Michael disciples me. Last week, we had a great D time. And you know how Michael is when he disciples you, very matter of fact. Because, you know, Michael, well, you know, pride has been one of your track records since I've been here and since I've known you. So it may be something that you may want to consider and just pray about it that maybe you want to. You know how Michael is. You just pray about it. Maybe you have some pride in your heart right there. And, you know, Michelle as well. And then Maria gets on Michelle and says, you know, you, you, you've got your challenges right here too, Michelle. And so, there's been, so you guys may want to pray. And we just, and it's great when you as the evangelist can open up and get some discipling yourself. But they, they saw God was with us. And they moved. We need to be praying for their kids. Kiara is studying the Bible. Isn't that awesome? That's awesome. Anita and Renee Vermont, they came on to be with us. They came on to be with us. Didn't you see me? Anita's up here singing to God right there. She's all beautiful, got her scarf on. She's like, I'm back in the kingdom. I'm in the kingdom. And of course, Renee's going to be doing our communion contribution today. You know, it's more remnant is going to join us, guys, when they see the Lord is with us. We've got to be totally committed. Our charge is not just London. We've got all of Europe that needs the gospel. This is not enough. This is not enough people saved. We've got to have scores of people coming to the waters of baptism. Coming on over from the remnant and joining us. Knowing, hey, there's protection down there in London. We can get disciples. We can get encouraging. Encouragement. We, we can get protect. Numbers will come when they see the Lord is with us. Verse 12. You guys still with me? Yeah. Says they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, the God of their fathers with what? All their, All their heart and soul. All who would not seek the Lord, the God of Israel, were encouraged because, you know, we can't, we, you know, we got to, you know, it's, you know. All who would not seek the Lord, the God of Israel, were put to death, small or great, man or woman. They took an oath of the Lord with loud acclamation, with shouting and trumpets and horn. All Judah rejoiced about the oath because they sworn it wholeheartedly. They sought God eagerly. He was found by them. So the Lord gave them rest on every side. King Asa also disposed of his grandmother, Maka. The word Maka means depression. Depression. See, impurity will lead you into depression. Promises a lot, delivers a little. It says, remove Maka from her position as queen mother because she made a repulsive Asherah pole. Asa cut down the pole, cut down, cut the pole down, broke it up, and burned it in the Kidron Valley. Although he did not remove the high places from Israel, Asa's heart was fully committed to the Lord. All his Life. Verse 19, there was no more war until the 35th year of Asa's reign. We got to be totally committed to dealing with sin. We cannot be sentimental. Sin, a mental. Are you with me here? Um, we had individuals in our church get involved in sexual immorality on more than one occasion. Recently, it's come to my attention that there's been individuals that have been sleeping with one another, not married. Uh, not once, not twice, but three times. It's not the first occasion where it's actually happened. There's been a charge of, hey, you cannot do this. It's wrong in the eyes of God to these individuals. Um, when individuals get involved in these kinds of sins and are unwilling to repent, that's willful disobedience. I I'm not advocating that we, we, don't, we aren't strong in the grace, but we will not tolerate sin. An individual who wants to live like a non-Christian is not a disciple. Uh, if you're involved in any of those sins right there, I want to challenge you today to get open about them. Uh, and if you've done it more than once, you've got to come before the church and ask for prayer. This isn't my calling. This is Acts chapter, or this is Matthew chapter 18, the call of God. He says when, when you go to someone they sin, you just tell them just you two. 
Then if they don't, re they don't repent, you take two or three others. If they don't repent when two or three others, you tell it to the church. And I'm not talking about the challenge we had with our, our, our sister who, who was brought before the church. She, she's been broken and she's here. She's worshiping. She goes, I'm, I'm trying to come back to the Lord. Th that's awesome. Your prayers are working. Your prayers are working. But we got other situations in our church. Is that totally committed? No. What did Asa do with those who wouldn't seek God with all their heart? Got to go. You know why? Because they weren't there anyway. They weren't there anyway. We cannot be sentimental on sin, guys. I'm not talking about harsh. I'm talking about sentimental. Well, I don't want to come. And then, you know, one, one individual had attitudes with the church. I got attitudes with the church. Church didn't do this. Church didn't do that. And did not get open about their sins, their weaknesses. Now, here's the cool thing about the church. You get open about your sins, there's forgiveness. Yeah. But when you're deceitful and you're holding on to it, I know I've done it. They had to talk to me. They said, you know, we may have to ask you not to come to our church anymore, Michael. You're, 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 you're deceitful. You've gotten into this sin of impurity several times. And we're going we're gonna to have to ask you. I got the fear of God because I didn't want the kingdom taken away from me. I changed. I changed. If you're involved in those sins, I challenge you right now, stop it. Stop it. Stop doing that. You're hurting yourself. You're hurting the kingdom of God. We cannot have sentimentality. He got rid of his grandmother. <laughs> Grandma, sorry. <laughs> I love you. You got to go. <laughs> I'm sorry, Grandma. Thank you for the cookies. You're in sin. You got to repent. <laughs> and then come back when you're ready to be restored to the Lord, Grandma. And historically, you know who Maka was? She was a great granddaughter of Absalom who, who led the rebellion against David. Rebellion can run in the family. Let's, let's close it out. Chapter 16. Chapter 16, in, in closing, you know, here's the, a Asa, the, the challenge with Asa, he started well, but he ended wrong. It says in chapter 16, in the 35th, 36th year of Asa's reign, uh, Basha, king of Israel, that's the remnant, went up against Judah and fortified Ramah to prevent anyone from leaving or entering the territory of Asa, king of Judah. See, the, the remnant did not want to join the new movement. They fortified the city. We don't want you going down there. So there was, dare we say, quote, unquote, a spiritual civil war. And all you remnant disciples catch that. Verse 2. Asa then took silver and gold out of the treasury of the Lord's temple of his own palace and sent it to Ben-Hadad, king of Ram. That's non-Christian. Who was ruling in Damascus. Let there be a treaty between me and you, he said, as there was between my father and your father. See, I'm sending you silver and gold. Now break your treaty with Basha, king of Israel, so he will withdraw from me. I mean, Asa is making, quote, unquote, a deal with the devil. He's trying to make a deal with the enemies of God. He's trying to make a deal. He wants the he wants Israel, but he's using not only his own money, but church money to kind of pay for a treaty. You know, we're not going to lower the standard of commitment for any group. We're going to build the church. People will join. That, that's what Asa, that's where he got himself in trouble. Verse four, Ben Hadad agreed with King Asa and sent the commanders of his forces against the towns of Israel. They conquered Ion. Dan, Abel, Maim, and all the store cities of Naphtali. When Basha heard this, he stopped building. Ramah abandoned the work. Then King Asa brought all the men of Judah, and they carried away, the, uh, carried away from Ramah the stones, the timber Basha had been using with the help. With them, he, with them, he built up Geba and Mizpah. You know what this is? This is a short-term solution for a long-term issue. He did a short-term little solution, but it had long-term impact on God's people and on himself. We're not doing short-term solutions, guys. We're not gonna have short-term conversions. We're not gonna have short-term people that are a flash in the pan for a day and they're fired up today and then soon as trouble or persecution hits them because of the word, they quickly fall away because they have no root. Th that's not what we're out to do. I wanna challenge you as Christians to reach out to people that can do greater things than you. I wanna challenge you to have that in your heart. You know, I wanna reach out to people who can lead me. I want to challenge you as women to go after those women that are more pretty than you. And just say, it. yep, she's more pretty than me. Yeah. Don't, don't be competitive. Don't do that. Don't, do, don't be competitive. Well, look at her hair. She's, look how prideful she is. 
She's not open. I mean, I don't want anyone in the kingdom more prettier than I am. After all, I'm so gorgeous. All my pride here I'm draped in. My robe of arrogance I've got on. And... You know, I want, I, want, I want there to be a young brother in our church that if I'm taken out, he can, he can, he can take it. He can take it. You're out there, too. You're out there. We need that. We need that. We can't make any treaties with Rama. Let's not lower the standard for these short-term victories. Let's not, oh, I don't want to call this person to total commitment. Call them to total commitment. Call them to total commitment. Because if you don't get them totally, you don't really got them. As a church, we're not making treaties with other groups. We're not going to do that. We're going to build this church, and God is going to be with us. He's already with us. We're just going to be with God. No treaties, because that is not total commitment. Now, check this out, verse 7. Someone calls Asa on it, and it says this. At that time, Hananiah the seer came to Asa, king of Judah. He said to him, because you relied on the king of Aram and not the Lord your God, the army of king of Aram has escaped from your, your hand. Were not the Cushites and the Libyans a mighty army with great numbers and chariots and horsemen? Yet when you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. For the eyes of the Lord range through the earth to check this out, guys, the eyes of the Lord range through the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. If you are not fully committed, God will not strengthen you. You ever felt like, man, I'm not, God's not strengthening me. That's because you're not fully committed to him. Isn't that convicting? Wow. The reason I'm not getting stronger in my relationship with God and overcoming the, the, the sins is because I'm not fully committed. That's why. My life is taking me out. There's an issue of commitment. It, you know, commitment is, is about you and you. It's you and you. It's your effort. Effort is your effort. And the Bible says, when we get fully committed, God will strengthen you. You'll get stronger. And it says this in verse 10. Asa was happy with the discipling that he got. No. No. Asa was angry with the seer. Hopefully you're not angry at me today if you're visiting or if you're a disciple. Please don't get mad at me. I'm just the mailman. You know, when you get a bill in the mail, I can't believe they brought me a bill. It's, you can't get mad at the mailman. He didn't create the bill. It's your bill. You got to pay it. You know, in America, they have these clever ways, uh, clever ways of getting you to pay bills. They put them in envelopes that look like they're checks. They did that to me. I went out and I said, bam. It was during missions time. I go, yeah, I think I opened it. It was a bill. I looked at the mailman. I go, you, you need God. Something, what's wrong with you? I was mad at him. Please, please don't get mad at the messenger. That, 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 just, 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 just see the message right there. It says, Asa was angry with the seer because of this. He was so enraged. He put him in prison. At the same time, Asa brutally oppressed some of the people. You know, when you stop being fully committed, you brutally oppress the disciples. You brutally oppress the church. As long as I've been a Christian, it's always the most rebellious disciples that go, the church isn't loving. It's always those who fall away who goes, the church is harsh. Brutally oppress God's people. You can become distant when you're not totally commit, committed to God. Asa stopped being close to, to, to the, he's just down on the people right there. And, and this is an issue. The events of Asa's reign from the beginning to the end are written in the book of the king of Judah, of Israel. In the 39th year of, the, of of his reign. Asa was afflicted with a disease in his feet. Though the disease was severe, even in his illness, he did not seek help from the Lord, but only from the physicians. Do you see what happened here? God sent every kind of issue in his life to try to get him to seek him. He put enemies against him, other enemies against him. He had preachers come and talk to him. Then he finally got him sick. You know, People get sick not only because they just get sick. They get sick because God is afflicting them. God, God caused this sickness. So God, I make this guy sick. And I'm going to make it to where the physicians can't heal him, so he'll be forced to come to me. And even then, he didn't seek God. Do you see God in your sickness? Do you? This is a very powerful passage. Because it says in verse 13, in the 41st year of his Asa's reign, he died and rested with his fathers. They buried him in his tomb that he had cut out for himself in the city of David. They laid him on the covered 
covered with spices and various blended perfumes, and they made a huge fire in his honor. So ends that so inspirational, encouraging scripture. <laughs> wow! He stopped being totally committed. Today is just simple. Are you totally committed? I want to command you to come back to being totally committed to God. Go back to being totally committed. Totally committed to evangelism. Totally committed to prayer. Totally committed to giving back to the Lord what he has given you. Totally committed to being willing to go anywhere, do anything, and give up everything for the Lord. You know, we've got a special, special, special treat today. We've got a young woman who studied the Bible uh, for many years of her life. Her father was a preacher. Uh, she believes in the Lord. She believes in the scriptures. She came to Bible talk and got set up uh, to study the Bible and, and found out that although she was very religious, that she was not saved. And you know what she did? She said, okay, show me that in the Bible again. Okay, I got to go pray. <laughs> so she went and prayed and went, hold on, I, I, I can't wait another day. I got to get right with the Lord. Called up Michelle, called up the girls. Today, Bernice is getting baptized. She said, today, I am going to be totally committed to the Lord. Let me tell you something. She is a fireball. She's a fireball. She, she, she is on fire. She is awesome. She's got this incredible smile, this incredible zeal. But you know what? Although today is victorious, Sandra got baptized, Bernice got baptized. It, we've got to have scores of people yes. that are getting baptized from every single nation. It will happen when God's people get totally committed to God be all the glory. Ooh.